What's going on guys? This is Jareef and it's water change time. So the lights aren't on yet on the tank, but um as soon as, as soon as they come on, I'm gonna feed the tank and do a water change. I always normally will open up the window, allow the light to shine on the tank because I don't get direct sunlight through this window at all. So uh, it definitely helps wake up the tank as far as the fish, especially my rats. Like uh, he'll disappear around like 6:30, and it's over for seeing him for at least an hour until the next morning because the lights cut off at about 7:20. But um, anyway, like I said, this wakes him up. Uh, let's see if I can find him for you. Let's see all the other fish. Oh, there he is. There he is right there. So with that being said, as soon as the light come on, I'm gonna get the water changed. Let me show you guys the salt that I use. All right, so um, now I was, I used to use this on my 54 gallon corner reef tank. If you guys go check that video out, that was an amazing tank. But, um. I used to, that's all I used on that tank until it really got like overstocked with, when it came to corals and overgrown. I, st I switched to the orange bucket. And um, the orange, it, it did just as good for me. I mean, I, I feel like when it when the tank was full of corals and packed out, if you see that tank, you'll see, I think it it helped. But in the beginning, I went with this for almost two years, two to two and a half to three years, and that, that's what grew the ta that tank out. So on the 200, the 210, whatever, I'm going to use the Insta Ocean. I did do a water change once before with this. And like I said, I'm going to stick with this. I did go back with all the things that I used to do on the 54 gallon. So, and I, not to mention that BRS, uh, Bug Reef Supply did, uh, I think it's a BRS TV. They did a couple of different videos on this and, um, they basically showed the parameters, how do they, how it stores and everything all above. And I love that about that for the simple fact that it showed me that the alkalinity, which was what I, what I was worried about, the alkalinity in here, it starts at like 11 and it stores and it stays that way. So um, the, the orange bucket I think is a little higher, especially when it comes to the calcium. And uh, I feel like that was a little too much if you're going to have a new tank. Now, older tank, yeah, I'm going to probably end up switching to that once the tank gets grown out, but it's a 210, 220, whatever, but it, it's going to take forever to grow it out. So, with that being said, um, like I said, it's water change time, and uh, I just I filled that up, the, I think, Thursday. Today is Saturday, so I filled it up Thursday, let it run all day Friday. The water is crystal clear now. Like I said, that mixing time, they did a video on that as well. Um, I've been doing mine this way because I found that that was just best for me. My the water I always bought was um, like I said, it was the purple bucket, and uh, it, it it was stored like literally like weeks at a time, and it was perfect. So with that being said, retracing all the old steps gonna make me help with the future. So with that being said, I just tested the water, and um, it's a little salty. I always make it a little salty because it's easier to add fresh water and change the salinity versus adding salt and try to bring it up it'll take it could take longer i mean of course you could probably use it but i don't like to do that i like mine to be as crystal clear as it when it's supposed to go in the tank so have the heater in there i put that in there last night i do not run a heater the whole time i only do it like a like i said last night so probably eight hours or so before i'm ready to change the water in the tank and um that it keep it they get that pretty warm and that's probably why the salinity is actually higher now but anyway Moving forward. And they are on. So water change and feeding begin. So even though I installed a check valve, of course it's not the necessarily the best way, but it's how the flap go, where it can flap up and then flap down. That's what they would call so-called grabbing. But anyway, um, I did that so that so much water went drain back in the tank. That's the reason why I actually went with the 75 gallon over what I, my original plan was. And um, that way, what it did do a back drain or lights went out or something like that, I wouldn't get flooded. And of course it's working, but that check valve sucks. Probably should have went with the wire. All right, so the next thing on the list is taking out these foam pads, which is 
this this blue filter material. I have it in here, and I also have it in. And uh, like I said, just taking those out. I'll show you guys how dirty dirty they are. Now I use scissors to grab these out. These are for this tank, I do believe. Wow. But uh, look at that. It is terrible. But that's what these take out. And I'm changing these out once a week. And I'm putting like two or three layers in. So, yeah. Yeah, those blue paintings. Let's see if we can get you the better light. Those blue paintings. And they turn from that to this. So they're definitely, definitely happy. So I use them. Along with the skimmer, which I, uh, I'll show you guys how I drained it. Okay, so okay. this is of course a siphon plug. This is um, what's going to help me clean the tank. As you can see, I already hit this side. I already just took five gallons out on that side. And um, if your water looks like that, once you take it out, you know it needs to be checked. So uh, I'm going to do ten, two, ten, uh, five gallons. And the reason why I'm doing it like this, I'll explain it. So instead of doing one, just big 25 gallon siphon out. I wanted to hit the sand bed with two five gallons. So five gallons on this side of the sand, on that side of the sand bed, and five gallons off this side of the sand bed. And then two other five gallons are gonna just come from the top of the water so I can see how clear it is and make sure that my Kimmy Pure Elite doesn't need changed. So that's the reason why I'm going with um, the five gallon bucket over the one big, you know, tote. And uh, of course, it's also a hectic to move one big tote. But with that being said, uh, I could drain out the window, but uh, I don't want to put the salt water in the yard, so I more so flush it down the toilet. So for the, that's it for the most part. So of course, that's that. And um, see, that's my 10 gallon mark. I'm literally like right at it. So I'm gonna do another 10 gallons. And like I said, this time I'm gonna show you the water without hitting the sand bed. So apparently I made more than 20 gallons of water. So I made 25, a little bit more than 25 gallons. This is 30, so probably about 27 gallons, 27 and a half. So instead of this being a 20 gallon water tank, it's gonna be a 25 gallon water change, which wouldn't hurt it. And that is extremely clear. Uh, not so warm, but that's fine. You won't believe 78 degrees is actually colder than you would think it is. Like I said, it comes the last two gallons. Uh, I have a white bucket. Of course, it's not the depth of my tank. Sorry about that. It's not the depth of my tank, but it's long, deep enough. And now what I'm gonna do is put the water in here and see how clear or how, yeah, basically how clear it is towards the new water. It should have a blue color to it. If it does, and I'm gonna move it from this blue light. So um, it should have a blue color to it. If it does have a blue color to it, I know my carbon is fine. If it has a tint, it looks like a little brown tint you will know that you should be able to, you should need to change it. But um, like I said, these, that one is just for the other 10 gallons. And um, you can see clear through it, so I'm almost sure that the carbon is not depleted. But given research, you never know. So I'm not gonna even deal with that. But anyway, let's get this out and show you guys. Okay, something. so the five gallon bucket is full. This is the water, the new water, of course, as you can see, is pretty clear, pretty tainted. Now this is the water that I'm taking out of the tank. And as you can see, it does have a bit tan to it, but I'm thinking that's because of the sand stir that I had in the bottom. I didn't completely clean the tank out. I mean, clean the bucket out before I put the water in. But um, as you can see, from that to that, not too much of a difference. So I'm gonna leave that carbon alone, that Kimmy Pure Elite. Uh, I do have another one coming in the mail, but um, I'm not gonna change it out right now. I'll probably give it another Judging from this, probably another week or two, maybe even another hmm, month, maybe. But um, with that being said, like I said, that's basically showing me that my carbon is good and I don't need more. So on to the next. All right, so I returned the water using um this little line, the same line that I used to drain the water with. I just attached it to a, a pond pump. I think it pumps like 330 gallons an hour. So um, that's just to return the water back in. Uh, of course, with my handy 
painter's tape just to hold it up there. I could get a one of those, uh, I guess, a clamp, but um, I don't want, really want the clamp on my glasses. It, it kind of, I know it might not do anything, but it bugs me out. But anyway, so UV is back on, got the light back on, got the see the bubbles going through it. Let's me know if the pump is back working. Now the skimmer is the last thing that I'm having to finish along with adding the rest of the water. So um, this level should be, I'm sorry about that, let me straighten up on the eye. So this level, water level should be here. So I have a, still about another five gallons to add. So like I said, I know I have to um, clean the skimmer while it's in the sump, and that's because uh, I made this choice that going with this bigger skimmer, well, not going with the bigger skimmer, the bigger sump, uh, didn't leave me much room under the sump to um, take the head in and out without uh, possibly wasting all of it back in the tank, and that's not what I wanted to do, so I made that choice to have to end up cleaning the skimmer wise in the sump which I'm fine with. The skimmer is beautiful. It works amazing. And I could have went with a different brand, but the reason why I didn't because I wanted to go with everything pretty much Jabor on this reef tank. And this Coral Box Skimmer uh, D Plus 700, D700 Plus, it is ran off of a Jabor um, pump. So that's what made me buy this skimmer. And uh, I, did, I did do some research on it. It does amazing. And I went with the, the 700 Plus over the Cloud 9 because the Cloud 9 was humongous. I think it was way wider. And looking at the 700 Plus, I don't know how I was gonna fit the Cloud 9 in here anyway. So, good energy worked out on that one. So, let's move forward. Let's get this thing washed up, cleaned out, versus the top, use napkins. Of course, wife bugs out about the napkins, but I have paid for them too, so I could use them. But that being said, all right, so now this is it. Now these are the struggles that I have to go through just to own a reset. But anyway, like I said, I drained that in here. And uh, it just sit on top of that baffle. It won't hurt it. And it just drains it all out. Now uh, that's actually, uh, I drained it once. That's an actual, uh, I filled it up with enough, some more salt water. Just so I can make sure I get the rest of it out. And I see the finished product of the skimmer as well being cleaned out. That foam is starting to build back up. But um, I could probably do it better, but I'm not really worried about it right now. I just wanted to be able to see what that foam level was and it's where I want it to be. So I'm not going to mess with that. Moving forward with that, this is it. This is the the water change on, this is how I do my perform, my water change on my 210 gallon reef tank. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, so basically what I'm doing now is uh, just cleaning the glass. And um, of course I use a mag float. That's how I get that done. So basically it's just a magnet that stays inside the tank. One side stays in, one side stays out. Magnet floats right back to it. And uh, it basically scrubs off the algae on the inside of the tank. So I always figure it's a good thing to check your salinity once you finish uh, changing the water. So check your salinity. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see in there. We're going to get you in there. So check this out. Here's the light. Let's see if we can get in there. All right, you guys. All right, you guys, that's the salinity. Just checked it. And that looks pretty decent, definitely. So I'm um, 35 parts per thousand. I believe that's what it is. All right, guys, this is the morning after the water change. Not necessarily the morning, but the day after, I would say. And um, everything looks great. Everything's opening up pretty decent. And all I wanted to show you guys was the new addition that I got today. And there it is. To me, the tank. And as you can see, he's already, already doing his job. So that's three tangs in the tank. I will be adding two more. Will be a, a hippo tang and a powder black tang or white cheek tang. 
whichever one you like to call it. But anyway, um, this is True Reef, and I'll catch you on the next one.